Hi and uh, welcome to the week 5 presentation on television personalities. I've chosen to focus on popular television presenter and journalist Louis Theroux. He is best known for his often outlandish documentary topics. So just a little introduction to uh, Stardom on the Small Screen. Stardom on the Small Screen does differ slightly in terms of stardom and the film industry, with television personalities making up part of who we consider to be stars on the small screen. Bennett states in the introduction to his book of them, I hope to unpick the construction of orderliness, intimacy and authenticity of such performers, the various forms of skill and labour that go into making up these persona and performances, and the economic, cultural and ideological functions and value they serve, indicating that there is actually a huge importance to the personalities we value on the small screen. Both Lurie and Bennett sort of define and divide different performers on television. Laurie into the personality, celebrity and actor, and Bennett further seeks to detangle these categories, especially the personality and the actor. However, Laurie does admit these categories can overlap sometimes. Theroux was actually born in Singapore. His father is a novelist and travelling writer, and two of his uncles are also writers, with his brother being a novelist also and a broadcaster, as well as actor cousin Justin Theroux. The Theroux name is somewhat established in the world. Louis grew up in England and describes in his book as having an anxiety prone childhood and ended up, however, going on to be a high achiever reading modern history at Oxford, then going on to America where he had his first journalistic job. He now holds dual British and American citizenship. So through time, he has done several documentaries over the years, the topics of which are often controversial and hard hitting, such as drugs, sex work, looking at sex offenders and looking at prisons. One of his most controversial being the work he did with Jimmy Savile before allegations about him arose. He has now expressed regret for doing this documentary work. His first television job was for TV Nations, kicking off a career exploring outlandish subject matters as he explored matters to do with the KKK and selling Avon to people who lived in the Amazon. Moving on from this, Theroux has had his own title programming for the BBC and other platforms, such as Louis Theroux's Weird Weekends and When Louis Met. As a testament to the importance of Louis Theroux as a personality and a star, he has in effect created a sort of brand for himself. Where Louis Theroux is, is an interesting yet contentious subject matter is not far behind. Additionally, he has revisited some of his work to make further documentaries, such as revisiting the most hated family in America, a family with extreme, extreme views. But this sort of more indicates that there is a thirst and a pop and his work in this sort of realm is popular. So looking at the platforms through is on, his documentaries are made widely available on streaming services, some native to the UK such as the BBC, but some on wider platforms such as Netflix, Hulu and Amazon. More than anything, it shows a solid interest of his documentaries and a testament to the popularity of himself as a presenter, as well as possibly an international appeal for his work. Certainly his focus on subject matters based in America might be part of this international appeal. He has also won two BAFTA awards, a high honour in Britain, honouring the quality of his documentaries, and has also been nominated for an Emmy for his work, signalling a wider, more international recognition of his documentaries. So we're now going to watch a clip from Miami Mega Jail Part 2, one of three documentaries. How are you doing? All right. Can we come in? This is your place? Yeah. You said they accused you of murder, is that right? Yeah, uh, triple murder. Triple murder? Yeah. Three people were killed? Yeah. How many, and how many defendants? Uh, three. Three now. So you had two alleged accomplices? Yeah. What do they say it was about? Drug territory. On the outside? Yeah. They say you were some kind of a drug dealer? Yeah. So I was a drug man. And what happened? Say, uh, one of my homeboys just got killed. Baby was 15 years, 15 months old, and they assassinated him. Now, they say it was a retaliation, so. You said one of your friends had a 15-month-old baby. Yeah, and he was assassinated. And he was shot and killed. He, he got executed. Really? Why? It was a drug war. 
rivalry. Yeah. So the prosecution contends that you and two accomplices went and executed three of their boys? Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. A, in what sort of circumstances? Like, was it drive-by or you went, they say you went to their home? No, they say they were ambushed in the car. Where? Coming from court. Coming from the courthouse, yeah. Why were they coming from the courthouse? I guess they had a court day, one arm or something like that. I ain't really sure. It was outside court or outside their houses? Outside of the court. Right there in the plain, in plain day? Yeah. Do they have a strong case against you? I wasn't there, so I don't know. Do they have witnesses? Yeah. So they say I was a trigger man. Do they? Yeah. What do you say? I wasn't there. Where were you? I was home. Doing what? Sleep. Sleep. And how long could they give you? I'm facing death penalty. Really? They say you stabbed someone to get in here, is that right? Yeah. That's what they said. Who do they say you stabbed? Who they say I stabbed? You remember? It was another inmate in another yeah, unit. I don't, I don't remember the name, but it was another inmate in another housing unit. Do you know how to make a shank? Yeah. How? I could make one out of I could make one out of here, but I ain't wanna never break it. Out of this boom? No, nah, out of that, that that vent. This. Yeah. Why does it say no rap fuck the other side up? That mean like I don't got no rap for nobody. Is the other side the the, the, the correctional officer? Nah, the other side is anybody out of bounds. Me so looking towards the ruse appeal and image on screen, I chose this particular clip because it shows the situations Louis puts himself into, and I really think it shows the ruse appeal on screen. Looking towards Louis and the quote, these performers have to force information from their surroundings, creating particular pressures which show up in their performance. Theroux does this well. His calm demeanour and the fact he puts himself central to the situation on screen makes for a much more naturalistic performance and opens a dialogue when interviewing people. As we can see here, he's openly answered when he asks the inmate if he can make a shank. Even when he clearly disagrees with those he interviews, he calmly confronts them to open up a wider conversation, not justifying their views, as Louis often acts as a counterpoint. He has said himself he credits the fact that he is not in a studio, which allows him to create an intimate space to be able to have these conversations. This then leads into him feeling very natural and familiar to the viewer, as Bennett states, their televisual image is not only authentic, but is also one of ordinariness, being able to be just as they are with ordinary members of the public. I think Theroux completely embodies this. He embraces awkward silences and bumps in the road with working with ordinary people. His authenticity and often awkward British humour that derives from a conflict of ideas or Theroux's approach to understanding the subject matter creates for a humorous and familiar personality on screen, which can be comforting when watching a documentary that features often hard to handle subject matter. So actually emerging from his persona on screen, Theroux has been considered a sex symbol, an unlikely sex symbol, and I think this quote about him really sums up well why he may be considered a sex symbol of the small screen. He's not toxic masculinity, but tonic masculinity. He's like actually wanting to eat your green vegetables. I think his calm familiarity and gentle approach that is, is a contributing factor, as well as his awkward humour that is found oddly appealing. And like the quote, he's actually wanting to like wanting to eat your green vegetables it means people are aware that this is a sort of quirky attraction but are approaching the attraction from a healthy point of view that there is value and attraction for his actions and demeanor than overlooks as a sex symbol and Theroux has said himself I prefer to be a Brad Pitt sort of sex symbol but I'll take it so he's also aware of himself and how it originates in his persona on screen So Theroux also ventures sort of into what Lurie would consider to be a celebrity persona. As she says, the actor may perform as a celebrity when they guest on a game show. I think it could be said that Theroux's star image has allowed him to cross slightly into the realm of the celebrity. Although Lurie does state it is the actor who crosses over into this, I would argue Theroux as the personality also does. He's featured on things like Celebrity Bake Off for Cancer, 
university challenge and has been on the opposite side himself being interviewed about his own documentaries it's another chance for his personality and persona on screen to be shown and I think it really does come through especially with Bake Off where the show is normally for ordinary people. So his off-screen image and appeals so looking through off screen he is not totally private and shy about his personal life as finding most british stars in the film industry tend to be he has openly spoken about his wife in interviews and is known to have a family with three children his well-known family might be a contributing factor to this having those couple of family members already famous and in the spotlight may generate more interest in personal matters and family connections he is known for being quiet, quite witty but kindly intelligent in interviews and has actually written a book detailing his growing up, making of his documentaries and details of his personal life, which signals there is a market there for those who are taking interest in elements of Peru Theroux's personal life. I'd also like to suggest a large part of Theroux's image is perpetuated by the internet. Having social media himself, it provides a great point of interaction with fans. With Twitter being his biggest following with just over 2.2 million followers. However, even without his interaction, there has been a large circulation of him on the internet. He's the subject of many memes, such as Instagram account called No Context Theroux, which has over 175,000 followers, a Twitter account called a look called Louis Theroux which generates random titles based on Theroux's introductions to his programmes, and is the subject of a lot of merchandise, such as Louis Theroux prayer candles. I think it is re his relatability and humour that have allowed him to be so widely circulated and popularised on the internet as a way of boosting his star image and awareness of his documentaries. Okay, so I'll leave you with the questions now to consider.